Today we're teaching Arena Zoomers about stacks. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Safrada Live, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. And this week, we're handing out some more life lessons for Arena Zoomers. Today, we're teaching Arena Zoomers about stacks. If you don't know stacks, it's a pretty infamous vintage prison archetype, with the idea being you stack up a bunch of permanents that make things cost more mana, and eventually get enough of those that you kind of just lock your opponent out of doing anything, well, we can kind of do the same thing on Arena now, thanks to some new Brothers War editions. So our deck today is kind of modeled after a little bit vintage stacks, but trying to bring that to Arena. So let's talk about our deck, what it's trying to do, jump into some games and see if we can teach some Arena Zoomers about stacks. So first off, we got our main stacks pieces, these permanents that make things cost one more mana. Thorn of Amethyst, Thalia, make non-creature spells, cost one more. Lodestone Golem, make non-artifact spells, cost one more. God Pharaoh's statue makes our opponent's spells cost two more. So any one of these is fine, especially in the right matchup. But in our deck, our hope is to get two or three or four of these pieces on the battlefield together, which is going to make it so a single spell is going to cost like four more mana, five more mana, which hopefully will make it essentially impossible for our opponent to function. Then we have Karn the Great Creator, which does two things in the deck. First, if you look at Vintage Sacks, one of their key cards is Null Rod, which is an artifact that's literally really discard static ability. So if we run into an artifact deck, shutting down artifacts abilities, actually incredibly powerful. It can just win by itself. More importantly, Karn can snag even more stacks pieces from our sideboard. More God Pharaoh statues, more Thorn of Amethyst, uh, the Immortal Sun to deal with Planeswalkers, Liquid Metal Coating to eat away lands, a Book of Exalted Deeds to combo with Mutavault to keep us alive for a while. And then we have our Mishra's Workshop for Magic Arena. The other key card of vintage stacks is this weird old land that just taps for three mana for artifacts. Well, we can kind of build our own Mishra's Workshop with Strike Proctor in Lotus Field. Strike Proctor makes it so if a ETB would trigger, got to pay two mana or that ETB is countered. So it does just stacks ETB. It's actually pretty powerful on its own against some decks, but we can also use it with Lotus Field. Lotus Field, when it comes into play, you got to sacrifice two lands and then you get a land that taps for three mana. Well, if we have Strike Proctor, we just counter this sack to lands part. And then Lotus Field is kind of absurd. It's our arena legal Mishra's workshop because it just taps for three mana. Then we have our Dranith Magistrate stacks plan. So Dranith Magistrate stacks as our opponent by keeping them from casting spells anywhere other than their hand. So you can't flash a spell back from the graveyard. You can't cast a card that's on an adventure. So it hates on some decks by itself, but we also have Synergies for it. In Soul Partition and Elite Spellbinder, these are cards that essentially put permanents or spells from our opponent's hand into exile. Normally, they can still be recast. You gotta pay two more. But if we have Dranith Magistrate, our opponent can't cast spells from exile. So we just get rid of those things forever. Then we have our Creature Stacks plan. Containment Priest, mostly a card for like collected company if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield but wasn't cast it gets exiled instead so that hates on some decks naturally but it also combos with Eldrazi Displacer which just blinks a creature for three mana so if we have both of these we blink one of our opponent's creatures it comes back into play it wasn't cast it goes to exile forever so repeatable removal that can eat away our opponent's board mana base we talked about most of the important stuff a bunch of colorless lands for Eldrazi Displacer and that is stacks for Magic Arena that is is our against the odds deck for this week so let's jump into some games and see if we can teach some arena zoomers what it's like to get stacks out of playing magic hopefully keeping people from really doing anything at all so let's jump into some games and teach some arena zoomers what it's like to get stacks out of playing magic so thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some brothers war cards and snag them from our awesome sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish against the odds time we uh, are mulliganing a one lander oh, this is better we are <laughs> trying to teach uh, arena zoomers about about stacks this time we love teaching new arena players <laughs> about all these miserable old archetypes as new cards come to arena. Ooh, we're up against control too. This should be the dream. Potent tabs out for search for kind of mutable. Stacks piece number one, Thorn of Amethyst. Artifact Thalia, basically. 
non-creatures, one more to cast, but on an untapped land. So we have a lot of stuff that taxes spells in specific. Yeah, let's play Displacer. If they counter it, that's fine. We really want to resolve the, the lodestones and so forth. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of stuff that specifically attacks non-creatures. So uh, Control hopefully will be a good matchup because they have so many non-creatures spells. Pony Castle Arden Vale. Thor number two. Well, hit you with the Displacer. See if we can get our opponent to tap down. I think we're gonna go with another Thorn. We could play Lodestone, but this plays around like Sensor and whatnot. Thorn, two, stacks piece number two. <laughs> oh, all right. Pony, three mana Dovin's V2. That's fine, that's fine. Well, next turn we can start Lodestoning. Passes. If we ever get down this God Pharaoh statue, soul partition, eh? Displace ya. Down to 12. And run out of lodestone. Do we have a counter? Non artifacts, one more to cast. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, opponent is casting their expensive counter spells and keeping the stacks pieces off the battlefield. We'll see if this is enough. All right, feel the ruins fine. Well, go to combat. Hit you with the displacer. Down to nine. I mean, pony is on a clock. Load soon too. Are we out of counters yet? Come on, we need the stack sig. <laughs> All right, march of otherworldly light to get rid of the thorn. So I guess we break even. We still have one, one stacks at the moment. So opponent's paying one more for everything. Mills a alchemy card. I mean, opponent needs to do something though, or they're just gonna die to oh, these soul partitions. They're just gonna die to the beats. Well, get in, hit ya. We're not doing anything else, so I guess we just blink it. We do want to keep our our stacks pieces on the battlefield. Yeah. Well, save the lodestone. Hit you to six. Opponent untaps. Ooh, they're gonna flip this Kanta. Okay. What do you? Okay. Supreme, we really need a land here for this God Pharaoh statue. Okay, Chef it dudes. God Pharaoh statue. Double stacks. Opponent spells two more to cast, and it's a clock. One damage a turn. We draw a land. I think we need to start Guild of Guining here. Let's. We want to get rid of. Is Kanta. I think if we do this now, two our opponents gonna tap out to use it, and they're still getting taxed. So we might be able to sneak in a mute of all the attack. Opponents down to five on this Kanta. Opponent activates. What do they find? Hopefully nothing that can kill a mute of all. <laughs> Opponent. Okay, more dissipates. Five mana counter spell now. Uh, we will grab a land and their Ardenvale's tapped, so we don't really want to untap it here. So I think we just over tap, hit you with a mutable. <laughs> Down to three, play the land, pass the turn. Drain you to two. So now we just need one more mutable attack. Opponent. <laughs> Counter spell not looking super good. Well, uh, let's blow up the Castle Arden Vale. I think this works because we can just soul partition the token and hopefully our opponent won't have the mana to deal with the mutable. All right, opponent makes him one one. So stuff costs two more. So opponent needs a one mana way to kill Mutaval here. Uh, well, let's bounce the token and then fight for the Mutaval and about it scoops it up. Yeah, I mean, because we're a card deck, nothing in the sideboard, so we're just gonna run it back and keep stacks in them. We only got what? Maximum plus two mana to everything our opponent played. Not bad, not bad. But you could see even like the thorn just slowed our opponent down. The lodestone just slowed our, it made it hard for them to just execute their game plan because they had to do everything off curve. So even without like everything cost five more or something ridiculous, it was still effective. Oh boy. All right. Our traditional one colorless land mulligan. Uh, We'll keep this, although it's more okay than great. Lodestone to the bottom. Well, let's see what we find. Planes. Well, run it out. I mean, we got a lot of creatures, and Karn is good. Island for our opponent. More lodestone golems. Well, Dranath Magistrate does combo with Paulo. Uh, oh my god, opponent missed. Oh, they missed their land drop, and we draw a thorn. Oh, you know what's really good at punishing <laughs> decks for missing their land drop? That would be cards that just make their make your stuff cost more. Oh, all right, opponent has a veto. Well, opponent's still alive. Do they draw land? No. Do we draw Thorn? Yes. <laughs> We're gonna try this again. Thorn. Opponent. So everything costs one more to cast. An opponent cannot beat the Thorn. Max punish for missing that land drop. That was pretty good. Sweet, sweet.
against odds time. We are <laughs> teaching arena zoomers about stacks this week. Uh, a lesson that we, we haven't taught. <laughs> we haven't taught them yet. Yeah, we'll play first. Ooh, all right. I mean, we got the, the Proctor Lotus Field draw, and then, I mean, we have some stacks. Thalia is a stacks piece. A bonus. Artifact land it. Ooh, Karn can be pretty punishing against artifact lands. Uh, Well, let's Chef at Dunes Thalia. So there's gotta be some sort of affinity deck, I would assume. A bonus. Dark Steel Citadel. Ingenious Smith. Well, now I kind of wish we had run out the Sturk Proctor. Opponent, ooh, Foundry. All right, we're gonna run it out now. Normally, it's best to wait. You really don't want to get Strict Proctor killed with the Lotus Field in hand. All right, get down the Lotus Field. Mana increasing. Hit you with the Thalia. Let's see how good this Proctor is against our opponent. Ooh, okay. Runs out of Smith. <laughs> Can't pay the Proctor. See our opponent hovering, realizing how wrecked they are. Can't play the Foundry because of Thalia. Ooh, Lodestone. Actually, Lodestone's probably going to be bad against this deck, right? They're an artifact deck. Let's get in with our dorks. In a sign of good deck building, I think we're going to play Elite Spellbinder and pay for our own Proctor. That's the only ETB in our deck. That's the one That's the one non bez Strict Procto Proctor plus Spellbinder, but I think it's worth it. I mean, Proctor made so much mana with the Lotus Field that it's worth it to pay the, pay the price if we have to. That is a handful of action. I guess we just take the Thought Monitor so our opponent can't easily draw cards. They can't cast a, like the Nettle Sis yet because of Thalia. Yeah, the, the Lodestone's not looking great. Opponent, Esper Sentinel. <laughs> wow, they <laughs> maybe Strike Proctor is just absurd. Our opponent can't grow their Smiths unless they pay two for each trigger. Wow, all right, opponent pays for one and scoops it up. <laughs> Well, sometimes you just play a Strict Proctor and win. We're gonna bring in some more removal. We gotta go down the Lodestones. Opponent's deck just all artifacts, so Lodestone in this matchup is the is the stacks piece that does the least. Uh, I don't know what the last card we bring in is though. I don't know, something random, Shadow Sphere. I mean, the life gain from Shadow Sphere is nice, and we really, if we're getting Karn, we're probably not gonna tutor Shadow Sphere, so I think that's fine. That was surprisingly well, that Proctor just wrecked him. I mean, Proctor plus Thalia, really, but. All right, opponent's on the play. We got our, our Skyclave, this is fine. Opponent, untapped land, Ornithopter, Esper Sentinel. All right, that's a, that's a fast start. <clears throat> yeah, Chef of Dunes go. Tempting to play the Ajano, but... Oh no. Oh, so that Ornithopter is about to become a 4-4. Four -four. There's a Thorn. I almost feel like, oh, this is so painful. I think we might just have to bounce the 4-4 four -four with Soul Petition. It gets rid of it forever because it's a token. And then next turn we can Skyclave something. Opponent is gonna get to draw a card. All right, so opponent, yep, upgrades to a 4-4. Four -four. We will, why our opponent is tapped out, just bounce it. Sadly, we cannot pay the one. <laughs> opponent, who's who's taxing now? I wonder if Esper Sentinel, maybe that could be worth it in our deck. It's not really a stacks piece though. It's more like, I don't know, more card draw opponent. Spring Leaf Drum. This Karn, if we can get this down on a relatively empty board so it lives, is going to absolutely destroy our opponent's hopes and dreams. The stat, ooh, hey, Thought Monitor, that's a good one. Essentially a Mold Drifter. There's the Displacer. Well, I really want to get rid of this Foundry. Let's Skyclave, get rid of the Foundry. Just in case our opponent tries to Ornithopter and go off or whatever. Well, let's see how much pressure our opponent can get. Springleaf Drum, shh, that's not pressure. Goes to, ooh, goes to combat hits us. Hmm, another Karn. We can Karn, but our opponent gets to draw a card and we did see that they play counters. Maybe we just Displacer play around the Sentinel. Plus Displacer Skyclave's kind of cute. Doesn't get rid of Thought Monitor, but can answer other stuff. The opponent, glass casket. Mm-hmm, the Displacer, that makes sense. At least now I guess we can play the Karn and pay the one. Hits us down to 14. Well, let's see, ooh, Lotus Field. No Proctor though. I guess we just run out the Karn. Run out the car and pay the one. It didn't feel like they had a counter last turn. All right, no counter. So artifact shut down. How do we keep Karn alive? If we tutor, it gets hit to one. If they have removal, it dies. I guess we can just tick up on their land. They can't activate the land anyway, but are you stacked? Oh, oh, brutal. Another artifact land. 
Wow, opponent giving up on the Karn, just going face. Uh, well, Karn, take it up, eat your land. We might need the life gain at some point. Let's Shadow Sphere, pay the one. Yeah, let's just Thorn. Like, us shutting down our opponent's mana with Karn, plus stacking their plays, if you add all that together, it's gonna make it hard for our opponent to do much. Now, sack a couple lands, play the Fair Lotus Field, and yeah, I guess we just pass. Our opponent really needs to start attacking this Karn at some point, because if they don't, we're gonna be able to start tutoring. All right, opponent has a non-artifact land. That's that's good for them. We also have a backup Karn, so if things somehow go wrong, opponent looking at her stacks pieces, crying on their pile of artifacts, glass casket, sure. All right, well, our opponent might be able to beat down this Karn now. They get to hit it for three, and they get another 1-1. One, one. All right, well, opponents just, they're just gonna accept that this Karn is part of the game, I guess. Now we're gonna tutor. We don't really have a sweeper. <laughs> we're all stacks pieces. Stacks pieces and hate cards, essentially. Could get like a mortal sun for card draw, Might stone in, maybe might stone weak stone. I think at this point we just wanna try to keep Karns alive. So maybe might stone weak stone just snipe the thought monitor. Yeah, let's play the land so we can pay the one. Kill the thought monitor. And then I guess we can use the the mana to activate Muta Vaults at some point. We are down to nine. Like our opponent's plan of going phase is like kind of killing us. Uh, oh, untap land. Oh, big Karn. Oh, okay. Uh, that is going to make a huge Karn strike. That's an issue. We need Ensnaring Bridge on Arena. That would, if they ever had Ensnaring Bridge, we are going to uh, teach some Arena Zoomers about the joys of not being able to attack. All right, opponent, stay in face down to seven. Can we get out of this? Containment Priest. I guess that's a chump blocker. All right, let's tutor with Karn. At this point, our opponent can make more Karn Strucks. Our best bet might be to try to live and then set up the, the Book of Exalted Deeds Muta Vault lock. I think we can survive. So we play Book, chump block the Karn Struct, and then next turn we can Muta Vault Book. That might be our best bet. I guess we could like transmogrifying on the Karn Struct or something, but. I think this is our best, our best shot. So play Book of Exalted Deeds. We gotta pay, pay the one because of Thorn. Pay the one for Sentinel. We've done a good job of putting around the Esper Sentinel. Opponent got one card on turn two. So we're gonna have to chump with the Muta Vault, but I think that's fine. Once we get Book Muta Vault, our opponent shouldn't be able to win, and at least with damage. What are we doing with the Karn? Goes attacking, well. Fire up Immuta Vault. Block the 6-6. Six, six. These artifact lands have been so bad. All right, play the artifact land, takes up Karn. The Karn is scary. I think the Karn might actually be able to get our opponent out of there. Uh, this, they might be able to tutor something from their sideboard to get out from under the Book of Exalted Deeds lock. Plus, I mean, it just shuts us down from activating it. So, opponent gets the counter. Oh, we might have to kill this Karn now. Granith Magistrate. So, let's take up Karn, my stone, and weak stone. Get rid of our opponent's Karn. Fire up the Muta Vault. Yeah, this, this combo, I'm surprised this combo hasn't gotten better. With Muta Vault, it's so much easier to pull off than Faceless Haven, because it's only one mana to activate Muta Vault. And then Book of Exalted Deeds on the Muta Vault, give it the counter. So now we have our, our Muta Vault Platinum Angel, essentially. I guess it's on our opponent to figure out a way, a way to deal with uh, this Muta Vault, which we will never activate. Never, ever, ever. We're gonna go to negatives, but we're not dead. Not until they can kill the Muta Vault. I don't know about this strategy of just not killing this, or even in trying to kill the car, and they just, they just have ignored this Karn, and this Karn has just really hurt them. It's eaten so many lands, it's tutored up everything we needed. All right, run out the Containment Priest. We could take up and gain some life. We could, like, take up and equip to Might Stone and Weak Stone. We do know there's a counter, so we can't just grab... Yeah, let's just eat a land. We can't just grab a God Pharaoh statue or something, or it'll get countered. Run out Ranith Magistrate, which is basically just a 1-3. I mean, we'll see, they could have a way to, to kill the Muta Vault if they have a Field of Ruin or something in their deck. Yeah, let's go Containment Priest. All the way back up to zero. We did it. Oh, uh, and then I guess we just move over the, the Shadow Sphere and pass the turn. Ooh, all right, that's it. Thought Monitor is good for our opponent. Draws two. 
win the game at zero life achievement mode. <laughs> it's possible. You don't get to do that very often in Magic. Ooh, opponent has Shadow Sphere. Oh, they can't activate it though. New. Okay. Oh, that's actually absurd here. Eat your Citadel. Yeah, we can, we have the Containment Priest. So now we just get to eat our opponent's board. And I think that's how we win. Like this should let us close out the game kind of quickly. Play the Displacer, we can pay for the counter. So they can make us tap down a bit if they want to. I think we stacked them. Yeah, the the extra crispy recipe of just ignoring the Karn here might've came back to haunt our opponent. We killed so many lands. Oh no, are we getting our first salty scoop? Is our opponent trying to consider if they should counter this or are they salting out? with three timeouts available oh my god we stacked away their will to play magic we got them the funny thing is if you remember at the start of this game our opponent had their draw too they had to like turn to make a four four off the ornithopter they had a they had a good draw into the the thought monitor into removal spells they were going off but now they're not now their clock is running all right salty scoop one salty scoop one hopefully there will be many with this deck got him i mean that is for me the sign of a good deck if you not only win but make your opponent salty rope out of the game because they're so devastated by how much you block them out of playing magic arena zoomers don't know don't know what to do with stacks they don't know in these situations it's tempting to be like your go or something but it just comes across kind of bm right <laughs> i don't think there's any any winning if you emo it, i think it just makes you look bad no matter what although if i was crim you know crim would be crowd surfing karn spamming it <laughs> uh, we have different emoting philosophies opponent almost out of timeouts we might as well get rid of the karn struct oh all right out of the negatives, <laughs> back up to two. You can hit us for lethal opponent. You had a thought monitor, we're at two. Of course, uh, the mute of all with the platinum angel counter <laughs> means that doesn't work, but this deck does have that effect on some people. Is it time to head to explode? <sighs> Got him. <laughs> That is the kind of win we want with the deck. Not only winning, but literally taking away our opponent's will to play magic. Stacks them. Yes, we very much should have fun. I would click this twice if we could. <laughs> Sweet. Against the odds time, we are mulliganing a five lander, I think. Trying to teach Arena Zoomers about stacks. Another life lesson. Whoa. This is the riskiest hand. If we draw land, this hand is insane because we can proctor Lotus Field. If we do not draw white source, we do nothing. See what our opponent's up to. Land and, oh dear, Elvish Mystic Mono Green. Mono Green Devotion, this could be sketchy. Oh, okay. We get the planes. We will play magic. The magic gods come through. Well, this should be interesting. This might actually, oh, Elvish Warmaster, our opponent's elves. This will be a challenge for our deck. All of our spell stuff doesn't really do anything because our opponent's almost all creatures. Let's see if we can beat a creature deck. Containment Priest. And all right, another land. Well, Strike Proctor, run out the Lotus Field. Mana Trouble's over. How do we beat a creature deck though? I guess we're on the Containment Priest Displacer plan. Ugh. All right, Elvish Arch Druid. The opponent's gonna pay to make an elf. Let's see if this package is enough. Field of Ruin, run out Displacer. So now we have a, a kind of a combo. Containment Priest exiles things that come into play without being cast. Displacer blinks things. So now we can basically pay three and kill something on repeat. So get rid of the Arch Druid. Maybe this will be enough. If our opponent can't kill our stuff. All right, another Lord. Are we paying with Proctor Trigger? Yes. I mean, but we just get to do this twice a turn now? This should be like our worst matchup. Like our Thorns and our Thalias, they just do nothing. But Displacer Containment Priest might be enough. Found it. Trying to figure out how to attack. Yeah, all right, just some more Master, so we'll take three. I mean, the bad news for our opponent is that we just, we just get to keep killing things. Another Proctor. Well, uh, blink your Leaf Crown Visionary. <laughs> Dead forever. Uh, blink your Elvish War Master. That goes to exile forever. Yeah, let's pass another turn. I mean, unless our opponent has removal, I don't know how they beat this. Opponent, Dwayne's elite. <laughs> the Proctor is back. <laughs> the opponent scoops it up. The Proctor kind of annoys our opponent too. Well, that went shockingly well for a bad matchup. Let's bring in three removal spells. Go down three thorns. Yeah, let's try the transmogrifying run from Man uh, Dranith Magistrate and just run it like that. Opponent's name is Real Elves, dude. That's a, that is a good name for uh, the deck they're playing. Very authentic opponent. And then this avatar. Opponent's fully on brand. I wonder if they're actually an elf. 
All right, so opponents on the play. I still don't think we should be able to beat this deck. This should be a bad matchup, but eh, you never know. Well, we have a Containment Priest. I mean, I think our chance of winning is to do what we did last game. So Containment Priest plus Skyclave is actually kind of kind of what we're hoping for. Ooh, opponent's going to five. That improves our odds. Land of War Elves. Lodestone Galame. Well, land you. Opponent gets in for one. Yeah, that's not too scary. Ooh, there's a proctor to go with the Lotus Field too. All right, let's pass and leave up Containment Priest. Against Elves, we might be safe to just run out the proctor, but in general, we want a proctor Lotus Field in the same turn. Getting frisky. Uh, Containment Priest. Oh, got him. Sure. Opponent Realm Waka. Oh, we could exile the Realm Walker, but I think we'd rather just get our mana going. Let's trick Proctor, play the Lotus Field, pass the turn. Come on, Eldrazi Displacer for the full blowout. Opponent, passing. Oh, <laughs> GG, GG Elves, GG. Uh, okay, uh, Muta Vault. Muta Vault and Eldrazi Displacer, and we're gonna do this again. Blink your Realm Walker forever. And opponent scoops it up. Apparently we can teach elves about stacks too somehow. I don't know how that worked, but uh, <laughs> we'll take it. Sweet, sweet. Against the odds time. Teaching some more uh, arena zoomers about the joy of being stacked out of a game of magic. Yeah, we'll keep this. I mean, we got some stacks. This is a good Drenith Magistry hand. We have double two things that work with it. Ooh, Strict Proctor. We would love to find, we would love to find a Lotus Field. That would make us happy. Opponent, Simic. Could be Merfolk? Okay, it is Merfolk, okay. Oh, this might be a tricky one. Another creature deck, eh? Ejano. Well, play the land. So Thalia doesn't seem great. So we Draineth Magistrate, then they Lord. Then we bounce the Draineth Magistrate. Yeah, I think we just Draineth Magistrate. Probably the best thing this hand has going, honestly. Draineth Magistrate synergies. We might have to Spellbinder next turn. I'm very scared of Coco. Opponent. Master of the Pearl Trident. Gets in for three no blocks. All right, we draw a plane, so play the planes. And yeah, let's Spellbinder. Try to make sure there's no Coco. Okay, there's the, oh boy. This hand is a problem. Well, I mean, we're gonna take the Coco. Opponent has a lot of Lords in hand though. They can double Lord here. There's the land. There's the Lord. Wait, oh, they can flash in a Lord. I guess we just gotta take it. I think we're, I think we might've finally met our match. <laughs> We've been able to teach Arena Zoomers about stacks, but I'm not sure we're going to be able to teach Merfolk about stacks. Is there any possible way out of this? We're at eight. We can bounce a Lord, but then our opponent just plays another Lord. Strict Proctor, Thalia. I'll play the land. Soul Partition, Master of the Pearl Trident. Play a Thalia. Pass the turn. I don't think it's enough. Opponent. Oh my god, another. So many lords. And I guess, actually, this this is bad, but we gotta do it. Try to kill two lords. This does free the cards that are locked under the magistrate, which is unfortunate, but. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, that's a lot of merfolk lords. We did we did not teach the merfolk lords about about stacks. They they taught us about tribal aggro. Um, <laughs> bring in a bit of removal. Maybe the shadow sphere. We're gonna go down the thorn since our opponents essentially exclusively creatures. Bring in transmogrifying wand, might stone and weak stone. What does this leave us to tutor up? Actually, maybe we leave one in the sideboard. I mean, we probably go down, sadly, Thalia too. Oh, maybe we gotta keep one. I kinda wanna keep one removal spell. All right, we'll leave the might stone and weak stone. Run it like that. Yeah, this is a, this is a tricky one. Our best bet is gonna be the, the containment priest displacer lock. I mean, that game, our opponent just drew a relatively absurd number of lords. That was so many lords. Well, we have the containment priest. We have the one Thalia left in our deck, unfortunately. Chef at Dunes go. Untap land and shape a sanctuary. I'll play the land. Do we run out the proctor? Probably. Yeah, let's run it out. Don't really want to run out the Thalia yet. It's probably going to hurt us more than it hurts our opponent. Lotus Field would be nice off the top to fix our mana concerns. Silver Gill up, revealing a Lord. Doesn't get to draw a card though. We get a land, which is good. Hit you for one. 
I mean, I guess now maybe we do play Thalia. Yeah, I mean, Thalia is actually a decent blocker. It can stop the Silver Gill even with a Lord coming out. It does tax our Soul Partition. Sure, Line Scout. All right, opponent's gonna try to find a land. Actually, that's, yeah. <laughs> Strike Proctor's just busted. It's so good. Come on, land. Oh, there's land. All right, play the land. Lodestone Golem. Keep the taxes flowing. And we're gonna get in with both. I think we're the aggro deck now. Opponent out of 14. Spells double taxed. Creature single taxed. And the Proctor is just being amazing. Passes. Do we attack with the Lodestone? Yeah, let's attack with everything. If our opponent blocks greedily, this whole partition gets them pretty good. All right, opponent just takes it down to six. They can't Coco. Yeah, let's just play another Strict Proctor. Get another Flyer down, pass the turn. Opponent. it. All right, they find a land. So they can actually cast a two drop. It's a Lord, sure. Passes. Opponent blocks and blocks and blocks. Oh, what a blowout. What a blowout. Bounce the Mistbinder. Opponent does get to draw a card. However, <laughs> our opponent essentially loses their entire board and drops to four and scoops it up. Maybe we can actually stack some Merfolk. Oh, now we gotta do it with our opponent on the play. All right, well, I mean, we're, we're back. It, it worked. I guess that's the thing that surprised me most about this deck is it should be absurd against decks that are just built around a ton of spells. Control decks, Phoenix decks, things like that. Spell Slinger is it? Well, those style of decks. The thing that's impressed me most is it's not like we're just drawing dead to creature decks. They're not great matchups, but we can kind of we can kind of keep up against uh, elves and merfolk and decks like that which on paper look like really bad matchups but the weird cards in our deck end up being good enough sometimes this hand is so sweet except we don't have lands maybe it's so sweet because we don't have lands and we have a ton of action skyclave's good displacer's good soul partition magistrate we could keep it and just try to get lucky transmogrifying wand even i don't think we can keep it though we are on the draw the nice thing about one land one keeping here is then if we do lose we can just blame the magic gods instead of uh instead of ourselves it's a trick keep that in mind <laughs> if you ever want to avoid responsibility for your own uh misplays <laughs> keep a one lander and blame it on luck you know what we're gonna keep this we're gonna keep I, I don't know if this is correct or not we're gonna keep this because this has literally everything we could want to win the game it is our best probably our best possible draw if we get to cast our spells if we get to cast our spells. Definitely no guarantee. Opponent hits a state deed. We really have to top deck a land here. Okay, Night Leia's presence. Thank you, I think. Lodestone Golem. That's not good. Down to 16. Savulet. Okay, we have to hit a land here. It's just one of those things. There's there's nothing we could have done. Nothing we could have done differently at all. The magic just didn't want us to win. Not our fault, not our fault. That's that's just the game. I mean, I guess we kind of stacks it ourselves by keeping that one lander. Against uh, Dodd's time, we are, ooh, ooh, this hand. Teaching Arena Zoomers about, uh, about stacks this week, and this hand's pretty sweet. Thorn, Proctor, Lotus Field, maybe God Pharaoh Statue. That's a lot of stacksing. Opponent, Soul Warden, sure. Do we play the Thorn? Opponent's probably gonna be mostly a creature deck. Let's just run out Proctor. This is a little risky, but it shuts down the Soul Warden trigger. <laughs> shuts down the Soul Warden triggers, which is kind of staxing in and of itself. Hopefully it doesn't die this turn because we really wanna play the Lotus Field. All right, Lunark Veteran. No life gain, thanks to the strictest of pro- oh, Double Lotus Field, okay. We will not pay for Strict Proctor. We will keep our Lotus Field. Thank you very much. Dranith Magistrate? I think at this point, we'd rather play the God Pharaoh statue before- Wow, Pona scoops it up. Wow, that was the quickest stacks thing yet. You know what I've been learning about this deck? Like, the stacks cards are sweet. We're gonna go down Thorns, go up Removal. The stacks cards are sweet, but Strict Proctor just kinda wrecks people. Like, that card by itself is enough to win a lot of games. Maybe Strict Proctor deserves, uh, deserves more credit. On to game number two. We'll be on the draw, and, well, we got Proctor, it was enough last time. Got a lot of lands, we got all the mana we're ever gonna need. Containment Priest, our opponent could be a Coco deck. I think a lot of times Soul Sisters plays a Coco. Is Collected Company good in Soul Sisters? Yes, that I'm actually confident in. Opponent starts with a tapped land. 
Lodestone, eh? Well, I mean, we can do some stacksing eventually. Opponent. Kralisara, that's a good one. We could run out the Strict Proctor to try to prevent the life gain. We really need the Proctor to live. We really, really, really have to have it live uh, because of this Lotus Field. So I think we're gonna wait. This might mean our opponent gets to trigger Trellisara, MDF C, to gain a little bit of life and trigger Trellisara. I guess the question is, do we containment priest? It's fun to get a blowout with Coco on the stack, but we probably might as well just run it out there. They could Coco next turn. Ooh, Karn. Well, all right, Strict Proctor. Lotus Field, go. I mean, things are looking pretty good. Opponent, planes. Oh, they had the removal too. Well, good thing we, Voice of the Blessed. Well, good thing we uh, waited to get that Lotus Field down. Opponent hits us down to 14. Even more land, eh? We're a little far behind on board for Karn. We might have to just Lodestone. Lodestone, get a little stacks going. Play the planes, I mean. We can crack the clue to draw a card. Opponent, land, and, ooh, Heliod. Okay, that's a bit frightening. Opponent, that can give lifelink. That's gonna be an issue. All right, draw a card. Come on, deck. Another Lotus Field. Ooh, but Eldrazi Displacer. Oh, that's that should be able to answer the Heliod, right? We got the combo. We got the Containment Priest Displacer. Oh, that's gonna, oh, it's gonna be so good here. I guess we just get rid of the Heliod. So Blanket, Containment Priest. Why is Heliod here? Does it not work with gods? Is there some reason? Oh no. Is there some reason? Is it like not a creature when it comes into play, but then it immediately becomes a creature or something? I don't understand why that didn't work. I think we're still okay. Like opponent gets a bunch of triggers, they gain a bunch of life. We can just exile the other stuff though. We know it works with with other creatures. Huh, if you, if you know why that didn't work, my guess is maybe it's because our opponent has exactly five devotion counting Heliod. So it was not a creature and then it became a creature? I don't know, but either way, we're gonna exile the Voice of the Blessed. This turns off Heliod, like exiling other stuff also works. Play the Chef at Dooms, exile Trellisara, and I imagine this has gotta be, gotta be about it for dear old soul sisters. Go to combat, hit you with Lodestone, and the Displacer. I mean, now if they play anything else, we just get to do it. They can't Coco into stuff, and our opponent. Got a lesson about stacks, got a lesson. We even punted with that Heliod thing and still, still got the win, stacks them. So what do we learn this week about stacks in Historic? And overall with the deck, we went a, a total of a five and four, which uh, is actually a little better than that. At one point I played blue white control like four times in a row and I scooped one of them. So it'd be five and three, but overall a little bit better than 50-50 match win percentage. More importantly, we kind of wrecked some people. We got some salty scoops. We got some early scoops. We locked people out of using their cards and doing anything. So the plan actually hilariously kind of worked. And I gotta say, maybe the best part about this deck is it actually worked against decks where stacks traditionally isn't as good. If you look at our cards with all the Thalias and Throne of Amethyst, we're really good against decks that are trying to play a bunch of spells. If you're trying to play a control deck, if you're trying to play uh, Arclight Phoenix or some sort of spell slinger deck, we're just gonna absolutely destroy you. On the other hand, if you play against elves or merfolk, some of those decks that are just like curving out with creatures, don't really have any spells. A lot of our stacks pieces get much, much worse, but we are actually able to keep pace in a lot of those matchups. We actually beat elves. We went to three games against merfolk. So it wasn't like we auto lost in matchups where our main stacks pieces just aren't that effective. And all of our strange synergies actually proved to be really effective in different matchups. We got to see the displacer combo with containment priest absolutely ruin the day of some creature decks. We got to see Dranith the Magistrate doing things, locking spells out of the game. So when you add all that together, the deck actually is kind of hilariously effective. So I don't know, I kind of love this deck. I think we ended out some good life lessons and ended up with a deck that isn't that bad. It's not tier one or gonna break the format or anything, but you can pick up a lot of wins with stacks on Magic Arena. So that stacks, that's some lessons being handed out to Arena Zoomers. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.